Hey there everyone and welcome back and welcome to the first part of an I don't know how many part video series. So one of my favorite things about collecting card games is the mystery behind some of the stuff. Researching new things that I don't know about and then trying to obtain rare items. Now I'm at a point with Pokemon where there isn't too much research that I actually need to do most of the time, it's just keeping up with new stuff. I've managed to pretty much grasp all the knowledge I need, and even though I am still learning stuff, there isn't a huge amount of research and stuff going on. And thanks to everyone being online all the time, everything is documented for brand new card games that come out, so it's very rare that something comes out now that is a mystery. It's something you can easily find out about. So I thought I'd set a challenge. Pick an old card game, just at random, that I don't really know anything about, see how long it would take me to fully research it, gather all the knowledge I need, and then try and complete a set of it. Now I didn't just want to flip through a book at random, or pick something out of a list exactly, because I didn't want to end up at a spot where I was researching a game that had no card availability and boxes were hundreds of dollars. I thought for this time, you know, maybe I'll do this again in the future, but for this time I'm going to at least try and make sure it is a game where there is some availability. So I did a tiny bit of research on some games, basically just made sure stuff was available, but didn't go too deep into it. So I wrote the name of five different card games on five different blank cards, put them in sleeves, I'm going to shuffle them up, and Laura is going to pick one, and that is going to be the card game that I try and fully research, look into it as much as I can, and try and complete a set of. No pressure. So Laura. Pick one of these five cards. Okay. I will be looking at two. The Looney Tunes TCG. Huh. From Wizards of the Coast from the year 2000. Okay. Thoughts on that? Did you know that existed? I had no idea that there was a Looney Tunes TCG. Especially not produced by Wizards of the Coast. Y yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> So that's what I'm going to be looking into for at least the next few weeks. It's currently April the 1st for us, and I'm going to see how long it takes me to get through this. Are you looking forward to it? I feel like we're going to have a lot to learn. You seem concerned. <laughs> we'll have fun. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about this, but Bugs Bunny, right? Right. Okay, so first step in trying to find out about this TCG that I don't really know anything about is just basic research. Let's go online, see what I can find out. My first stop is probably my most visited Wikipedia article, the list of collectible card games, but as you can see that didn't lead anywhere positive. We've got the old red text there, so no available link. A bit of googling didn't get us much further either. We ended up with a fairly unfavorable review on Board Game Geek, and then a few websites that barely had anything in stock. However, luckily, because this game was made before 2003, it's in here. This is a book that I own that I like to look through quite frequently. This is the Scry Collectible Card Game Checklist and Price Guide 2nd Edition from back in 2003. So going through the book, right in between Legend of the Five Rings and Lord of the Rings, we come across the Looney Tunes card game from Wizards of the Coast, released October 2000. This basically confirms there was only one set, there was never actually intended to be any expansions. And then we find some interesting stuff looking at the checklist. So you'll see it lists 210 cards in total. But if you look, there are actually two different numbering systems. Some of the cards are numbered out of 160 and some are out of 50. Using the guide on the bottom, with X being the fixed starter deck, it looks as though the ones numbered out of 50 are exclusive to the starter kit. So I'm hoping that the starter kit is going to contain all 50 of those cards and then it's booster packs for the rest of them. From this I also counted that there are 10 foil cards and 50 regular rares. So I'm guessing the foils are some sort of chase card, but no idea exactly how rare those are going to be. And I would imagine that rares are going to be one per pack. So it looks like we're going to need to open a minimum of 50 packs to be able to get the full set. From there I actually went to YouTube to see if anyone had done openings of this product before and actually found two videos. So we've got one here from Alex Swingle and one from Mr. Dead Card Gamer. I'll put the links to both of those in the description. However, they both only open the starter kit. And since the videos are from two years ago and four years ago respectively, they're not actually high quality enough for me to read the card numbers on the cards that come in the starter kit. 
but from the names of the cards they mentioned, it does look like it follows that pattern of 50 cards being the numbered 1 through 50. It looks as though the starter kit comes with one sealed brick of 50 cards and then four booster packs, which is makes up the total 110 cards that it mentions on the front of the starter kit, which I was able to see. One of these videos does open up one of the booster packs as well as showing off the fixed cards. And from what we can see, there is no indication on the cards what the rarities are. So I'm gonna need to do a bit more research on my own when I'm opening some of this product to check, you know, there is just one rare per pack, how many uncommons there are gonna be and how many commons. And that led me on to the next portion of what I needed to do, buying some sealed product. As I said, the five card games that I put aside for randomly picking one, I had quickly checked that they all did have some stuff available, so I could at least make this video, so I knew there was going to be some stuff on eBay. Looney Tunes, though, it seems runs into a lot of the problems that other card games have, where if you just search TCG, you'll just find lots of other collectible cards that aren't trading card games, because, you know, Looney Tunes, along with a lot of sports stuff, stuff like Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, other popular things, they have a lot of products released by companies like Topps, where they release collectible card series that don't have a game to go with them. So this can sometimes make it difficult to find the cards you're looking for, especially if you're looking for singles, and especially if you're looking for the base set of a game, which tends to not have a subtitle. But anyway, I found what I was looking for, and I've picked up the starter kit, and I've picked up two booster boxes. The reason being, you know, we need to open at least 50 booster packs in order to get all of the rares, assuming it follows the one rare per pack rule that I'm pretty sure it will. So two boxes is going to be 72 packs, plus the four that come in the starter deck. So there is a chance we'll get a full set. Not guaranteed, obviously, but we definitely wouldn't get one from one full box, which is why I decided to go for the second. So what we're going to do now is just going to wait for those to arrive. We'll look through them, we'll open them, we will start to piece together some more information from there. Alright, so it is the 5th now. Um, nothing has arrived in the mail yet. Did only order it a couple of days ago, and it's Sunday. But yesterday, a video went up on YouTube from Wassy Plays, uh, also known as PTCG Radio. Uh, he did a video opening the Looney Tunes starter set. Not something I was expecting to see, considering it's like the third video on YouTube about it, and I say the other two were years apart. So it's been good in helping with the research, uh, not so good in this video, <laughs> not looking like I'm copying him or, you know, being the first video in years, but we'll see. So his video did actually do well for our research, like I said. It confirmed that that stack of 50 cards within the starter kit, that is the numbers 1 to 50 of that separate set, and he got... He opened his four boosters, he actually got one of the super rare foil cards, um, I believe it replaced a common, but he, again, there was no way of no telling what the rares are, so I need to go through my stuff when it gets here, confirm, you know, is the rare at the end, is the rare in the middle of the pack, whatever, uh, but his foil did come in the middle of the pack, so I'm hopeful that it just means it's replaced a common, which would be nice. You know, as with the other videos, I'll link Ross's video in the description also. So the big things to work out when my stuff gets here is what does the foil replace in the pack, how many rares, commons and uncommons come per pack, and how rare are the foils, how many should you be expecting to get per booster box. But with two boxes and the starter set that should be easy enough to figure out. So the idea for this video was originally that I was going to see how close I get to finishing a set in a month. And I'm kind of glad I didn't fully stick to that concept because we've been kind of messed up by the postage. Um, which you know, is happening around the world at the moment, but my booster boxes did arrive. So I have two booster boxes here. Here, they actually look really cool. The like yeah, that's really crates, cute. they look really nice. Um, but I'm not going to open those just yet because I'm still waiting on the starter set. Which I mean, it's been about a month now, so hopefully it should be here soon. I know the guy said he was delayed in shipping it, but it should be on its way. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to watch through Ross's video again, and we're going to make note of the cards he pulls in the booster packs in order, and then. We're going to compare that list to the checklist that we have and see, you know, is it a run of commons, then uncommons, then the rare, uh, see if the foil does replace the rare that he got. We're going to go through that now and take a look at it. All right, so we've written down uh, everything Ross got in his packs. So I'm going to compare them to the checklist I have. So it looks like the foil might have replaced the rare then. Gross. So that first pack had four uncommons, then a foil, and then all commons. Mm -hmm. So I guess we now see if the next pack has the same four uncommons, then a rare. 
All right, so watching through Ross's video and seeing the four packs that he opened, uh, every pack is consistent. It starts with four uncommons, then you have your rare, and then what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10 commons. Uh, but the foil will replace the rare in the pack. Unfortunate. Yeah, um, that is pretty, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. They're supposed to be They're supposed super to be super rare. rare. And I think there's, there's not too many of the foils. All right, so we're still waiting on my starter kit arriving. Once that arrives, we'll start getting stuff open then. All right, so first thing I'm gonna open is we're gonna open up the uh, starter kit. So this is gonna have in it the 60 card fixed deck and then the four boosters. So the fixed deck should have just fully separate numbering. It should have cards numbered one to 60. And then the four boosters will be from the main set. Okay, so what we got in here? So we got rule book, play mat. We don't care about any of those right now. Oh, I'm not gonna like that. All right, so four packs. Let's look at the starter kit first. We will get these uh, sleeved up in a bit. So, books here is. 40, uh, oh, see so he's 40 out of 160. Hmm. Okay, so maybe he is the he is not counted in the starter kit. The starter, the other rest are 50 out of 50, so he must be one of the foils from the main set. Okay. But he has a first edition stamp on him. Oh. Exactly the same, I'm gonna try and get it on camera, but it's very blurry. Exactly the same first edition stamp huh. as the Pokemons, Pokemon stuff, early Pokemon stuff with uh, Wizards of the Coast. Uh, the stamp is actually in silver. It looks like it's showing up black on camera, but interesting. at least it shows up. So I now don't know if he's also going to be in the set as non-first edition or if he's going to be like Machamp where he just doesn't appear in boosters. So that's something we'll have to look into. And then we have, so this is 50, 49, yeah. This is just the full set, basically. The starter kit, separately numbered. That's kind of nice. Yeah, it's just all in order. We don't need to worry too much about this. As long as all the cards are there, it's up. Oh, yep. no. Couple upside down, but yeah, everything appears to be there. I haven't actually been counting, but hopefully it should be. Oh, and two and three are backwards. All right. Why is there like text down at the bottom of this card? I'm not sure. I think that might be a thing with the foil cards. Mm. Anyway, so what we got here on the back, these are the boosters. Obviously we're gonna be able to a lot of these, that's what we got. Uh, it doesn't actually have odds and stuff. Often Wizards of the Coast products would have odds in like how much, how often you got the foil cards and stuff, but this doesn't have that. Hmm. All right, so we know we're gonna get four uncommons, then our rare. So one, two, three, four uncommons. Wow, those are in really bad Ooh, condition. Yeah. I think that's just because of how they were packaged in this. So this must be our, then that'll be our rare. Okay. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten commons. So, other than the fact that foils exist, we have no real frame of reference for what we should be looking for. Right. I can't imagine there are any rares that are like significantly more sought after than others. Oh, there's a foil though. Oh, foil Marvin the Martian. Oh, awesome. That's one. Of the, that's one I wanted. I love Marvin the Martian. He's so cool. All right, so we got that from there. So it's then these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, yeah, so it, the foil replaces the rare. And then there, those are the commons. There are, as noted in other videos. Oh wow, we got oh, another wow. foil. We got a Tasmanian Devil foil. Awesome. Sweet, okay. So we're at, well, it's potentially three out of the ten foils. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, as been noted in at least Ross's video, which I have linked to, cards have no rarity symbols, which is why I'm sorting them into uncommons, rares, and commons now. So it makes them easier to sort later mm -hmm. because we have, you know, no frame of reference for. Do we know if they're. Oh, these are really bad too. Um, like in a particular order, um, numbering wise, or. Uh, no, so the uncommons here are numbers 152, 150, 49, and 38. 
so. So it could be anywhere. Yeah. All right, so that is the starter kit. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to one of the boxes. Okay, so we do also have two booster boxes. These should have these have 36 boosters each, so we're gonna do 72 packs total. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna show you the highlights uh, in this video. We're gonna go through them. We'll show obviously any foils we get. Um, I believe I'm gonna do the two booster boxes as booster box Wednesdays at some point. So we'll have the full openings if you're interested in those eventually. Oh, we got a foil. It's a Tasmanian Devil. Oh, I do like Taz. Yeah, so we have one foil so far from the box. Oh, we've got a foil. It's upside down. It's a foil Roadrunner. Oh, oh just drop dropping it. it. Oh, there's another <laughs> two packs in a row. Another foil Roadrunner. Awkward. Yeah, okay. Oh, another foil. Oh, cool. It's a foil Yosemite Sam. Oh, well, that's a repeat rare, so. Okay, so definitely getting doubles getting. from a box. Yep. So even with, uh, if we open two boxes, even with getting some doubles, even if we got all the foils, we can still get all the foils and all the rares with some doubles. So it's not the worst that we're getting doubles, but getting doubles within the same boxes. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's not ideal, but it's not the worst. Oh, we have another foil. This is Elmer Fudd Siegfried. We got another foil. We got Marvin the Martian again. He was from the- He was, we got him in the start there. Okay, we didn't get him as another repeat within the box. Oh, another foil. Got Wily Coyote foil. Ooh. He's wearing some sort of flying contraption. I like it. We got quite a lot of foils, so. Definitely got more foils than I was expecting they'd be getting. Oh, God, yeah. Okay, there's your 70 Sam again. <laughs> we don't, Is that yeah. the same one? Yeah, we got okay. him from this box already. Oh, well, there's a foil Tasmanian oh, Devil. Here's okay. the third one we yeah, have of that. The third one. Oh, we got foil Yosemite Sam again. Is he the third? That's the third Yosemite Sam we have. Oof. Oh, well, that's a foil we didn't have. That's Daffy Duck Duck Dodgers. Oh, cool. That's a nice one. There's more foils than we thought they were going to be per box. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of which, there's another Daffy Duck Duck <laughs> Dodgers. Oh, there's Elmer Fred Siegfried. We'd already got that one. It's mm -hmm. another foil, though. Who that? That is Bugs Bunny Leopold. Oh, is that the one from... The star deck? No, mm. I don't think so. Oh, foil Wily e. Coyote. Yay. Oh, foil Tweety. Oh, cute. Hi, Tweety Pie. And we haven't seen that one That's yet. a good one, yeah. That's a good one. So after those two boxes were opened, we've organized the cards. We've marked off what we have. And there's been a few interesting things we've learned as we were going. So let's go over those. So the first is the order. Obviously this is the fixed deck of 50. These are characters it looks like. You can uh, distinguish them by, they have this in the top left, but they don't have anything in the bottom left. These have the icon in the top left and a clapperboard icon in the bottom left. And then these are action cards, things that happen during the game. So the number ordering is so the characters are numbered first. You have all of the foils in alphabetical order then the rares in alphabetical order, then the uncommons alphabetical, then the commons alphabetical. Then you move on to these, it's a similar sort of thing, but there are only uncommons and commons, so it's uncommons alphabetical and commons alphabetical. Then we move over here, where it's the same thing again, but there are only rares and uncommons. Next thing worth noting, that we didn't notice when we were opening it, the cards from the fixed deck have this back. The cards from boosters have this back, so you can actually tell whether the cards came from the fixed deck or from the booster. And there's another interesting thing which ties into that. So here again, we have a card with the deck back and the booster back. And these are Bugs Bunny Rabbit of Seville. So within the starter deck, when we opened it, we saw there was the foil Bugs Bunny Rabbit of Seville with the first edition stamp that was numbered just as if it's in the main set. So we did find out it does just have a regular uncommon variant within the main set. The main difference being the back, the foiling. So this just means obviously it did come from the starter kit, but it's not in the starter set. So it's a bit weird that they changed the back when it was just a full reprint, but I guess that was just for, you know, printing reasons. And finally, I want to show you the most annoying card in the set and the weirdest thing we found. So this is a common. This is Bugs Bunny, number four. Uh, his actual set numbering is 67, so it won't focus there, but he has the number four, which is how the checklist we had was differentiating with between them. 
So I have a printout version of the checklist here. It's not super clear. I can show the one from the book. But we'll see if there's, see Elmer Fudd here, three, four, five. That's the, that relates to the number in the top corner. To differentiate, we need multiple versions. If we look at Bugs Bunny, this card doesn't exist. Bugs Bunny 4 isn't on the official Scry checklist. There is, however, a common called Bugs Bunny in Baghdad that we didn't see any of while we were opening the boxes. So this is basically where there can be huge issues when you're looking into games like this where they have almost no record, where there's almost no interest in them, almost no community. Because the little information that you do have, such as that checklist from Scry, you kind of have to take it as gospel. But as we've seen, there can be errors. That Bugs Bunny number four isn't on the list, but Bugs Bunny in Baghdad is. And for, because we opened two boxes, there's no way we just wouldn't have got a copy of that common. And even if there was a common we were missing, there's no gap in the set for the numbers that we have. Uh, we have a list of the numbers that we have, and the other rares that are on the checklist, they would fit in the correct order, so we know what numbers we're missing. But that card just wouldn't fit anywhere. Now, if it had just been simply that we had Bugs Bunny number four, and the set list said, you know, Bugs Bunny number five, or Bugs Bunny number three, you'd think, okay, there is a potential that there's a typo here. But the card that is on the list is Bugs Bunny in Baghdad. That's not just a typo you can make. So there are two possibilities I would say here in play. Number one is that when Scry was pooling its resources, someone just got it wrong. Someone either was looking at incorrect information that was available to them at the time, or someone actively tried to deceive Scry by coming up with the wrong thing. Or, because of the nature of the name of that card, there is the potential that this game had multiple print runs and they decided that a card called Bugs Bunny in Baghdad maybe wasn't something they wanted printed. It's a potential, it's something that could have happened. All I can really do now is I'm gonna have to go try and look online see if there's any more information I can find but I think it's gonna be difficult. Um, I am also going to be posting in some of the groups that I'm in to see if anyone is selling the missing rares. Uh, I think we're missing one foil and six rares. I'm gonna post on some groups to try and see if anyone's selling those. Obviously, while it was nice opening stuff, it's at the point where it just really would not be a good financial idea to be uh, buying more boxes because the boxes are still at around $40, $45 currently. And the fact that I could buy one of those and still end up only getting one or two of the rares that I need, it's just not worth it. I'm going to see if I can buy them uh, individually first, but we'll see what happens. The changed common issue is also another reason why I kind of dislike that Scry's checklist from the time don't give the actual numbers of the card for some of the games, because if we saw that that card, Bugs Bunny in Baghdad, had the same collector number on the checklist as the Bugs Bunny number four that we opened, we would know that it was a direct uh, copy. We'd know that's where it was supposed to be. And that would help the research in somewhat, but you know, it is what it is. We're gonna go from here. We're gonna see what we can find out. So we're now a couple of weeks on from that last part that I recorded. Uh, in that time, I have briefly spoke to someone else who has collected the game and has put together a full set. They had never heard of the Bugs Bunny and Baghdad card. They had the Bugs Bunny number four in their set. They also did confirm the res that I knew I was missing in the right spots. I've been able to locate, I think, a couple, two of the res and one of, and the one missing foil I had. Been able to pick up the singles, but with a game like this, it's just going to be at the point where I'm just going to have to wait until someone pops up with the missing res. Uh, I don't want to be waiting around forever to publish this video, so I'm going to leave it here with where we're at. Obviously, the the missing rares that I have are still in the mail. None of those were arrived yet. They could be a little while. 
I will quickly show off the binder in a moment just to show exactly where everything sits. And if I ever do completely finish the binder, there will of course be a follow-up video. I do really hope that some of you guys enjoyed this. This has been really fun to do. Um, I didn't get it done in as short a time space as I wanted to. A lot of that was due to mailing issues with COVID, things like that. Uh, stuff took a lot longer to arrive than it normally would have done. But doing the research and stuff into a game that I had no prior knowledge of, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed doing that. So I'll be definitely looking to do some more of these style of videos for other games that I have, you know, little to no experience of. So because of that, please let me know if there's any parts that you really liked, uh, or if there's any parts you thought I could do better, so that I know what to keep around and what to change next time I do something like this. All right, so let's take a look at that binder. So obviously missing the one foil, missing a couple of rares. Mostly full. Last couple of rares that we're missing. As you guys, there's the uh, foil first edition bugs, and then this is the full starter kit. So like I say, we'll do an update if this ever gets completely filled. So that was it. That was our full look at the Wizards of the Coast Looney Tunes game. From having pretty much no knowledge on it, to having nearly a full set, and knowing probably as much as it's possible for me to know at this point. Like I said, please leave me a comment, let me know what you thought, what parts you liked, what parts you didn't like. Um, if there's any specific games that you think I should take a look into for doing future videos like this, definitely let me know as well. But as always, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Check out some more videos right here. And don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content from DJ Gigabyte. Gotta, Gotta catch, catch them all! all. <laughs>